Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to replace a valve spring on a 2013 Ford F350 with a 6.2 liter engine. This vehicle came in with a misfire, isolated it to number 8 cylinder, I had spark and fuel, so we suspected a valve problem. Since the valve cover is very easy to remove off of these, I just pulled the valve cover, looked in there, and found the number 8 intake valve was broken. So the next step, I removed the ignition coil and the spark plug because we're gonna have to verify that that cylinder is on top dead center before we can change this valve spring. Now this engine has two spark plugs per cylinder. I find that it's easiest to pull the ignition coil out so we can look straight in from the top of the engine instead of looking by the exhaust or through the inner fender. As you can see, I can rotate the valve spring on that cylinder and the rocker arm is loose. So now I'm gonna pull the rocker shaft off. It's just a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts. And I only have to take the rocker shaft off the intake side because I'm only replacing the one spring. If you have a broken exhaust valve spring and an intake, then you'll have to take both rails off. Now there are lifters built into the rocker arms, so when you remove this, be careful not to jar it around because you don't want one of those lifters falling out. Take the whole assembly out, leave all the bolts in it if you can, and then place it on a flat surface until we're ready to reinstall it. Here's a close-up shot of that broken valve spring. As you can tell, it is bound up and it's not holding any pressure on that valve, so it has a misfire at idle. Now I'm using a bore scope to look down the spark plug hole and then I'm going to rotate the engine over until the piston is all the way up in the cylinder. I know it's hard for you guys to see my scope because of the glare, but what I'm doing is I'm using a ratchet to rotate the engine over. You can barely see the camshaft moving and I'm just turning it until that piston reaches top dead center. Now there's several methods of holding the intake valve closed. Some people will take a small rope and before they get it all the way to top dead center, they will feed that rope down the spark plug tube, coil it up and then rotate the engine over and that rope will actually hold pressure on the intake valve. What I'm doing is I'm using a leak down tester and I'm gonna use that to apply air pressure to the cylinder and that air pressure will hold the valve shut. The first time I did it, I didn't have the engine quite on top dead. It tried rotating over, so I had to back the engine up just a little bit, reapply the air, and looking at my leak down tester, it did shut the valve, and it has surprisingly low leak down, 10%. So I'm just gonna leave this tool on there, and it'll retain pressure on that valve the piston is all the way up, so even if I lose air pressure and the valve falls, it'll only fall a couple of centimeters until it hits the piston, and it won't fall all the way into the engine. Now here, I'm shoving a rag down around this valve and covering up some of the oil passages because the next step, I'm gonna have to take the valve keepers off of this spring, and you don't want them falling into the engine. If we spread this open, this part we're going to clamp around some of the bottom coils of that valve spring. This top piece will push against the retainer up here. I have a rag put down to keep the keepers from falling down into the head. Um, hopefully we can grab it with the magnet, <clears throat> but just in case they go flying, got a rag here. Help prevent it from hitting the oil pan. It won't take nearly as much pressure to remove these old ones as it will to install the new one. Uh, 
Um, I also have the air still running in there. That's gonna help keep this valve sealed up against the top. The piston's also on top dead center. So if I lose air pressure, the valve drops, it's only gonna drop a little bit until it hits the piston, and then I can get everything reset. Sometimes you gotta, it's a little tough when the valve spring's broken because it's hard to get a straight pull. So I'm gonna have to reposition this a little bit. So it looks like the valve spring is separating off the top of the head. Um, I did tap on this to try and get the uh, keeper to break loose, but it must be a little bound up. I'm gonna put a little more pressure and then I'm gonna tap lightly on top of the tool to pop the keepers free from the retainer. And now I have to carefully grab these keepers out of here without dropping them. It looks like I gotta compress it a tiny bit more. Now I don't know if these are a uh, a single lock or triple lock retainer or a keeper. If it's a triple, sometimes they're a little more difficult. Just gotta compress it enough that we can get that keeper out of there. So there's one and two. And they are a triple lock retainer or keeper. So carefully place those somewhere where they're not gonna get lost. And now we can untwist this tool. Normally you can take the whole thing out of here, but since this valve spring is broken, it's kind of bound up. Just loosen it up in here. I'll probably preload the new one outside of the vehicle. I have a little more room. So there's the uh, retainer. And that valve seal is actually torn. So we may have to see if we can get one of those before we can go back together. Now I didn't get the full footage of putting it back together because I didn't push the record button on my camera but this is a new valve seal, new valve spring, and I reused the old retainer and the old keepers. Um, the installation process is the exact opposite of the disassembly process. So once all that stuff's back together, you can remove the rag, reinstall the rocker rail. Now the rockers do have a strange torque procedure. Once you get them all snugged up lightly, you tighten them to 10 newton meters or 89 inch pounds. And then the next step is 20 newton meters or 177 inch pounds. And then after that, you have to tighten them a further 60 degrees. So I hope this video helped you guys if you had to replace a valve spring on your Ford with the 6.2. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.